today we'll tell you why the Redemptor Dreadnought might be the best Dreadnought in the game. Welcome to Implausible Nature, home to competitive Black Templars gameplay. All right, so on today's video, we are going to pick up where we left off in the Elite section. But this time, we're going to be talking about Dreadnoughts. And just remember that if you like what you see here or are interested in more competitive Black Templars content, please leave a like and make sure that you're subscribed. So about the same amount of choices here as uh, you have for the characters. We did take the Invictor and include that in this section. I know it is not a Dreadnought, but it is very similar to a Dreadnought in everything that it does. It just does not have the Dreadnought keyword, so it doesn't get the benefits of things like Duty Eternal and ancient, uh, Wisdom of the Ancients, etc. So uh, we are going to kick it off with the Redemptor Dreadnought. This guy has really come a long way from last edition where it was okay, but not great. It, uh, it has really gotten a huge boost. Duty Eternal gives this guy uh, a big boost in durability, especially given that he's got 13 wounds. He also has a slew of weapons, none of which are really bad to choose from. So you can really pick and choose where you want to go uh, with him as far as what weapons you want to use. You can make him full-on anti-infantry with the heavy onslaught Gatling cannon, or you can give him some anti-tank with the vastly new and improved macro plasma incinerator. This gun got a huge boost uh, with the new codex, going from damage 1 to damage 2 on its base profile, which means when you supercharge it, it's now damage 3 which is significant. That's that's really good. You're always going to want to supercharge with him. Make sure you save a command point to re-roll the number of shots to make sure that you're getting four plus shots uh, every time with this. The nice thing about this is that even if you decide not to use Wisdom of the Ancients or you don't have a captain nearby, you can safely overcharge uh, with this because it only causes one mortal wound after shooting with the weapon. Fortunately, Black Templars get a in invulnerable save against mortal wounds. So if you do roll a couple of ones in there and you're not able to re-roll them for whatever the reason is, maybe you happen to roll unlucky and get that double ones in your re-roll, we get a extra chance to save that mortal wound which is really nice so overcharge all the time with this guy but yeah he really just does it all uh, he's fast he's durable he has a slew of weapons to choose from and he hits really really hard in melee d3 plus three damage now uh, which is crazy. Yeah, the Redemptor is definitely a character that you probably will see in quite a few different Black Templars list uh, taking Probably just a single one. You want to get all of the, the weaponry added on. So it comes into a total of 185 points, typically, for your most loadouts there. And it'll do some work for you. As mentioned before, Wisdom of the Ancient is a, a, a great benefit to your list. If you don't have anything close, you can do an emergency usage of that stratagem to get rerolls of your hits or wounds on that. Uh, so that's going to be really good. He's also one of the only places in, our, in the Space Marine Codex that is not melee that can kill Terminators and or Gravis armor at ranged using that macro plasma incinerator. So that's huge. You know, being able to kill some of those guys, you know, in some lists, those Gravis troops are going to be prevalent. So this guy could kill them. Each wound, unsaved wound, will take one out. So that's kind of important for us. Our next one on the list is, as mentioned, not a Dreadnought, but it acts similar to a Dreadnought, the Invictor Tactical Warsuit. So the main draw on this one is it's basically a Redemptor Light, but it has concealed positions. So you do have that ability to deploy it anywhere nine inches outside of the opponent's deployment zone and or enemy units. So this gives you kind of like a, a good advance unit that can scare your opponent into deploying a little bit further back into their 
deployment zone. So it also comes with a slew of weaponry, uh, such as the frag, storm, grenade launcher, heavy bolter. Uh, you can arm it with the Incentium cannon or the twin iron hail auto cannon, depending on your needs in the list. Uh, obviously, the Incentium cannon is a flamer, so you don't have to roll to wound, or I'm sorry, roll to hit on that uh, with that 12 inch. Otherwise, it's, it's the same as a heavy flamer, or two of them. So you get the 2d6 attacks on that. So it's nice to clear out some hordes while they're in their face. However, if you feel you need the additional range firepower in the form of uh, auto cannon weaponry, you can take the twin iron hail auto cannon. It's a 48 inch range, six shots, so strength seven with the one pip of AP and two damage. So using that concealed position so you can get them to a good place on the board and take pot shots at your, your opponent as needed. Uh, however, with that being said, I, I think the Invictor's weaponry overall is better suited to close combat. Uh, you will waste its nice three damage Invictor fist as well as several of its closer range weapons such as the frags from grenade launcher. I would take the incentive cannon on these guys unless you really need that first turn firepower. Yeah, I agree. The Incendium Cannon is my preferred one as well. Like you said, this is a unit that you're going to want to deploy more aggressively. Um, it has a 10-inch move, so you'll want to de try to deploy it behind some terrain or out of line of sight uh, that first turn in case you don't get to go first. And then you just come around the corner and unleash all of its weapons into your foe and charge something and uh, basically just put a kink in your opponent's plans, make them really think twice about where they're deploying their armor and heavy units. It does three damage in, mo in close combat, so against things like Space Marines, where you have Gravis armor stuff, though that will be a priority target for it. The other nice thing too is that as it does take some damage, obviously its weapon skill and ballista skill gets bracketed because it does have the same 13 wounds that the Redemptor has. And this is another reason I like the Incendium Cannon, is because it auto hits, you don't have to worry about that. And it throws out a ton of shots, you can shoot it in close combat auto hitting, which is really nice. Uh, and that's really where we want it to primarily be is a melee threat that we have right in our opponent's face right in turn one they're not terribly expensive 160 points uh, for this unit so that is very cheap for the kind of gigantic threat that it poses to your opponent's army they're going to have to make sure they dedicate enough firepower to kill it which means that firepower is not coming down range at some of your other units uh, that you have things like your terminators or your if you have a redemptor in the list as well stuff like that so overall really really great unit for uh, for us uh, to be able to take advantage of first turn charges and that sort of distraction carnifex style so uh, next up that brings us to uh, the venerable dreadnought dreadnoughts in general when they got duty eternal in the codex have really seen a resurgence obviously it benefited some of them more than others the venerable dreadnought was always pretty decent but just was never fast enough or carried enough weaponry previously now i feel like uh, this is a a viable choice it's not going to be as fast as uh, either your invictor or your redemptor but it can ride in a dreadnought drop pod which is a forge world option but it costs the same as a regular drop pod and it now has the same rules so it can come in on turn one which is very nice the venerable dreadnought comes with you know the additional bonuses of it has better ballistic skill and weapon skill it has that built-in six plus feel no pain so combined with uh, duty eternal pretty durable little platform it's not super expensive you can have it really cheap at 135 points with an assault cannon um, a multi melta is only a five point upgrade on it um, which is not bad at all especially sticking in a drop pod you'll have plenty of range to uh, get something in melta range when you come in so overall solid choice for not very many points yep this is a great little piece that if you need some long range weaponry you can do that with that utilizing its weapon skill it's durable and one thing to note on all of the 
firstborn dreadnoughts is it also has the smoke screen category so you can also use that stratagem to protect it a little bit if you feel like that is a a, a unit that you need to to hold down an objective or some such so definitely a, a good solid unit for pretty cheap next up is the ironclad dreadnought so this guy is our dedicated close combat firstborn dreadnought so it also comes with duty eternal and the smoke screen category it also has the other special rule of wrecker uh, each time this model makes a melee attack if it is equipped with an ironclad close com combat weapon reroll hit of one so this is a, a great way to ensure that you are being optimal in your attacks uh, you can change several of the undersung weapons uh, under the close combat weapons to either a melted gun on one end or a heavy flamer on the one arm. And then you have the heavy flamer option or the storm bolter on the other one. As Alex mentioned in the Venable Dreadnought option, you can utilize the Dreadnought Drop Pod, uh, a good way to match similar tactics as the in Victor Warsuit is to give double heavy flamers and that'll essentially be an incentive cannon for you. And then you have the double melee weapons. So you can either do the Dreadnought Chain Fist, which is double strength, minus four AP, and two D3 damage. And then if you allocate the attacks to a vehicle, it is automatically a damage six. One thing to note with this is it does not take a minus one to hit when it attacks. So this is gonna be your standard take for most opponents, but you can also take the Seismic Hammer on that one, which has one higher pip of AP to bring you down to the AP four. And then it will also give you five standard damage. The downside of that is it has the subtract one to hit. This is something that you wanna be able to get into your opponent quickly. So the drop pod is gonna be a, one of the ways that you can do that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be advancing every turn, probably until you get to your opponent. Uh, so the first two, two turns, because it only has a strength, or I'm sorry, a movement of six. So you're probably going to be advancing your first couple turns until you can get in, into close combat. So you want to think hard about the possibility of taking that dreadnought draw pod into your opponent. Otherwise, once you get in there, it's a a nice distraction card effects. You can also take a couple of additional options on there with the hunter killer missile to give you some ranged weaponry on that that will, will do some work against long range while you're walking to your opponent as well. Yeah, I really like the ironclad. He is extremely durable for how cheap he is. He starts at just 135 points. Um, which is insane for a tough eight a dreadnought with minus one damage. There are two really good ways to run him. In my opinion, you can either drop pod him in, which is completely viable. Uh, just make sure that you have a chaplain nearby or a uh, someone with frontline commander uh, so that he gets a bonus to his charge range because you definitely want to make sure that he is going to be able to get in to do what he needs to. Flamers, his flamers now have 12 inch reach so they can fire and roast something when they come in, uh, which is nice. And the drop pod rules for dreadnought drop pods are now the same as standard drop pods. So uh, you're looking at that first turn drop in, which is excellent. Um, the other way that I would run him would be to run him up the board alongside your other troops. He is going to draw a lot of fire, but he's incredibly durable. Nobody is going to want to come near two heavy flamers. So uh, just charge him up the field and watch as he absorbs a ton of enemy firepower that isn't going to be shooting the rest of your army, like your Terminators or something like that. So use him in one of those two ways, and I think you won't go wrong with him. And if I were going to take one, I would almost certainly take double heavy flamers on him simply because it's going to help him out in melee a lot since he'll be able to shoot those in melee. He only has four attacks, so even with rerolls to hit and getting plus one for shock assault, that's not a ton of attacks. So he could easily get bogged down with chaff units um, where you know his big three damage and close combat weapons are useless. So those heavy flamers will help him clear, clear out chaff units or screen units so that he can get to where he wants to go, which is going to be your tougher units like Gravis, tanks, 
things like that. You can take the assault launchers on him. I think this is also a good take. Um, the assault launchers gets you access to that stratagem, which uh, you can select one unit with this keyword in your army and choose an enemy unit within nine inches of that unit. And then that unit has a choice. They can either take D3 mortal wounds uh, or they can lose an attack and can't overwatch or set to defend. So both of those are really good options. As far as his arm options, uh, the hurricane bolter option, I don't really feel like is worth it. I think you want to maximize your attacks, take advantage of that rerolls to one, for being equipped with an ironclad uh, combat weapon. And of the uh, options for Chain Fist versus Seismic Hammer, I'm gonna take the Chain Fist all the time. Uh, the reason being, yes, the Seismic Hammer has that five damage flat, but it has a minus one to hit, which stinks. And sure, it has an extra AP, but so does the Chain Fist. The Chain Fist has a minus, or a minus four AP, and it does 2d3 damage so which is nice and then if you're hitting a vehicle it does flat six so really powerful weapon there uh, and those are going to be your targets you're going to want to shoot or charge those vehicles uh, those heavy units and you don't lose much by taking the chain fist over the over the seismic camera as far as damage even with the 2d3 overall uh I think this is a good choice, especially if you're considering dropping in some drop pods. This is a good choice to support that. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this video. So uh, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Let us know what uh, you think down in the comments. What dreadnoughts have you had success with? Um, and uh, don't forget to subscribe so you can get notified on all of our latest content. Uh, we have a Discord channel, so uh, check out the link for that in the description below. And we'll see you next time.